I'm Joe Bob Briggs, and do not even consider passing up the next movie because it's alive. And after that, it lives again. It's a double feature by the great director Larry Cohen, who is head and shoulders above this guy who did The Vanishing, George Sluzier. What kind of name is that, George Sluzier? Oh, wait a second. George Sluzier made the original Vanishing, the Dutch, the Dutch one. Anyhow, that's irrelevant, because you're not even going to remember that after you watch the brilliant It's Alive. So stick around. See Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs next on TNT. Hey, Joe Bob Briggs. And it's baby night here at Monster Vision. Killer babies, to be exact. First up is the brilliant It's Alive. And after that, we'll have the sequel, It Lives Again. And uh, speaking of babies, you know, I can see it coming now. It's too late to stop it. What person in America is soon to become more abused than the smoker, more passe than a Jimmy Carter liberal, more out of it than a cocaine user with gold neck chains at Studio 54? You know who it is? <laughs> the person with no children. More important, the person who doesn't want to talk about his children. See, it starts when these people move out of your neighborhood and they talk to you like they've just made a moral decision, right? Well, it's been nice knowing you, Joe Bob, but now that little Wilhelmina is on the way, we've decided to move to a town that's a better place for kids. See, there's this thing that comes over people when they have babies, even before they have babies. They don't want any of you irresponsible, childless people breathing on that fetus. So... You say, besides, Roger says, we could never send Wilhelmina to school here. We got to find a decent school district. And you might say something like, Roger, we're dealing with a three-week-old fetus here that's about the size of an Egg McMuffin. I don't think you need to worry about that calculus <laughs> teacher they're hiring this year. And they get so miffed because you're taking this too lightly. It might surprise you to know that I want the very best education for this child, he'll say. You know, you know, they always tell you things that might surprise you to know, and they're always things that never surprises you to know. So it comes down to this. Once a person has a child, or even has the prospect of having a child, or even decides to have a child, he becomes a different species from the rest of humanity. He orders the Lifetime Network, you know? He re-ups his subscription to National Geographic. He starts talking about cholesterol and how after the kid is born, they won't be eating at McDonald's anymore because they don't want the kid to get hooked on that stuff. I said, hey, Rog, what if it works the same way as crack babies? The kid will be born addicted to McDonald's. And Rog, of course, doesn't think that's funny. And they all enroll in some kind of secret psychology class. They start using words like setting a good example, providing an environment that encourages freedom, displaying love as a healthy emotion. And after a while, you have to say, Roger, are you studying to be a priest or what? Whatever happened to buying the kid a baseball bat? But speaking of the joy, joys of childbirth, it's time for the 1974 hit movie, It's Alive, written and directed by the great Larry Cohen, the man who also brought us lethal dessert food, an alien hermaphrodite that thinks it's Jesus, and an Aztec lizard god nesting in the Chrysler building. Who better to bring us the story of a newborn that goes straight from its mother's womb to a killing spree in L.A., attacking innocent milkmen and leaving a trail of phony blood wherever it goes. Let's do those drive-in totals. We have 13 dead bodies, one dead cat, no breasts, multiple throat ripping, monster baby cam, delivery room foo, pinata foo. Not a long list, but a uh, great movie. Four stars. Check it out, and we'll be here through the whole mutant baby experience. And, um, you know, the other thing that happens is after a few years, your, your friend's baby is going to start visiting you. And he doesn't want to talk about cholesterol. He wants to play football and root around in the dirt and visit the neat part of town where you live instead of the boring part of town where his parents live. In other words, he becomes exactly what his daddy was before he experienced the miracle and the joy of childbirth. Oh, I see we have some comedians in the audience. Well, we have an outlet for all that destructive energy, young man and young woman. Just enter our Monster Vision caption contest and try to make the six-headed jury laugh. And the winner gets our exclusive Monster Vision t-shirt, plus the scorn of all the sore losers. Just go to tnt.turner.com slash monstervision, and maybe you can prove just how hysterically funny your mom never realized you are.
Play the Monster Caption Contest and win a free t-shirt at tnt.turner.com forward slash Monster Vision. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and It's Alive on TNT. And so the classic It's Alive begins with that famous shot of the broken skylight where whatever it is has escaped. The original It's Alive poster is a big collector's item now. There's only one thing wrong with the Davis baby. It's, it's alive. alive. <laughs> and was that Donald Trump as the lieutenant? Didn't that look exactly like Donald Trump or what? As I mentioned, this flick is directed by my pal Larry Cohen, who experienced Monster Vision fans will already know, but I'll brief the newcomers and the remedial viewers. <laughs> After making the big bucks writing for TV, Larry made a name for himself writing, producing, and directing Black Caesar. And he also made the sequel, Hell Up in Harlem, which he says are not black exploitation flicks because Black Caesar is a tragic figure. He transcends being black. And he did, uh, he did It's Alive and uh, two sequels to it, one of which we'll be showing later on. He did a flick called God Told Me To, also known as Demon, about a religious cop and a homicidal alien. Um, he did the gentle werewolf comedy, Full Moon High. He did uh, The Stuff, about a deadly dessert. Uh, Maniac Cop, which has another famous poster. He wrote Maniac Cop. He didn't direct it, but, but um, uh, the, the poster says, you have the right to remain silent forever. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a guy who lives in a mansion in Beverly Hills, does it? And that's why we love him. So let's get back to the flick. See what happens when you forget about money and just follow your heart? Yeah. You get a big house in the hills and a nice car and five cute kids. <laughs> or you starve, one of the two. I'm Joe Bob Briggs, and people do write to me, and some of them try real hard to get on TV. Let me tell you something that won't work. Hey, Joe Bob, you remind me of a castrated pigeon. Please read this on TV and say my name and the name of my cousin and tell me when it'll be on. Okay, here's something that will work. Dear Joe Bob, not since the novels of Leo Tolstoy has there been a genius able to speak to the whole world as you have since the arrival of Monster Vision. Now, you see the difference? Castrated pigeon, Tolstoy. Don't forget this. Send those letters and cards to me in care of Monster Vision, 1010 Techwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318, or email me at monstervision at turner.com. Maybe Tolstoy's a little far. <laughs> William Butler Yates, better example. Don't miss Monster Vision, hosted by Joe Bob Briggs, every Saturday night on TNT. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs, and it's alive on TNT. Nice go-go boots. Uh, that woman was horrified by whatever she saw, but look at what the monster baby was staring at, a 70s fashion statement. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wait a minute, Joe Bob, if your wife had a baby that went on a killing spree in the hospital the minute it was born, you'd just kiss her goodnight and go home? Well, one of the advantages of working at Monster Vision is that you can call up the screenwriter and ask him about that. So we called up Larry Cohen and we asked him. And he said that he thought that was believable because he thinks that after 24 hours, people will accept anything new in their life, no matter how shocking. So the president's semen stains, shocking for three or four hours, everybody kind of adjusts to it, you know? Anyhow, he wanted to make a film about what people would do once the shock wore off of having a mutant baby. All right, let's go find out what happened to the go-go boots. And by the way, this movie came out before all these genetic tests that tell you now what kind of baby you're going to get. See, it's almost 25 years later now. They can x-ray a woman's gut bucket and tell you exactly what's in there, you know? They got computer printouts of the DNA that say, yeah, this baby will never pick up his socks and he's a bedwetter. <laughs> and in the case of a monster growing in the womb, the computer printout would probably say, athletic career possible, endorsement contracts, you know? <laughs> Babies, though, I, I feel like breaking into song, you know? Because sing, sing, singing, my boy Bill. You know that song, my boy Bill? But but what if it's a girl? You guys really aren't fans of the American musical theater, are you? You don't know, that's the segue 
Oh. I guess you don't want me to do the 23-minute version of My Boy Bill, huh? Uh, no. How about the medley from Carousel? Uh. No. Okay. People say to me, Joe Bob, where can I download? I don't want to hear about that. Ask your mother about that. But if you want to find out about the Monster Vision schedule or read some of the weirdest mail I've gotten since my ex-wife sent me a cherry bomb valentine or just ogle the Playmate of the Week, then write this down, tnt.turner.com slash monstervision. 24 hours a day, you can waste time there and download all you want. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash monstervision. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and It's Alive on TNT. That's John P. Ryan as the father in denial. <laughs> John is a veteran New York character actor who made his film debut in The Legend of Nigger Charlie, the debut film of Fred Williamson. Actually, Fred calls it The Legend, the Legend of Nigger Charlie. And uh, he would go on to play bad guys in a lot of famous big budget movies like Five Easy Pieces and The King of Marvin Gardens, uh, Postman Always Rings Twice, The Right Stuff, Runaway Train, Cotton Club, Fatal Beauty, he was in that lesbian flick, Bound, the year before last. So if he looks like somebody you've seen, seen before, it's because you have seen him. I said it like that because there's another word that we can't say anymore. Yeah. So I say, lesbian. Oh, and the guy who plays his understanding boss, that's Guy Stockwell, the beau geste from the 60s and the brother of Dean Stockwell. And uh, by the way, that's not Donald Trump as the lieutenant. That's James Dixon, who's done just about every Larry, Larry Cohen movie ever made. Okay, I'll tell you about the mom later because we got more baby cam coming up. Roll it. John Ryan, as a matter of fact, he was starring in a production of Medea when Larry Cohen cast him in It's Alive. Do you know that play, Medea? Euripides? No, not really. It's about a mother who goes berserk and kills her babies. So there's nothing like ancient Greek drama to get an actor in the mood for killer babies. <laughs> did anybody see Diana Rigg? She did uh, Medea on Broadway. You know Diana Rigg, right, from the Avengers? She did Medea on Broadway. Y'all didn't see that, right? They actually showed the bloody dead babies. Sometimes I think there is hope for the legitimate theater in this country. I really do. Coming up, what could be worse than a mutant baby? A killer mutant baby, of course. See Joe Bob Briggs host It Lives Again next on TNT's Monster Vision. And tomorrow night at 8, see Arnold Schwarzenegger in his first comedy. See him with Danny DeVito in Twins. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs and It's Alive on TNT. Ah, birth control pills. Maybe that's what's causing the mutant babies. Larry Cohen threw in just about everything he could think of. Abortion, contraception, nasty insecticides, the media, drug companies, corporate America, greed. <laughs> and it's all driving Sharon Farrell crazy, isn't it? Sharon plays the mom. You may, you may remember her from The Reavers with Steve McQueen. Oh, yeah. Or one of my favorite movies, The Stuntman. But it's creepy the way she's relentlessly cheerful. She's the cheerful mom about this experience. So we also get a little, little help here from Bernard Herrmann, the great composer who did Psycho and Twilight Zone. It's Alive was Bernard Herrmann's next to last movie. That would be the penultimate film. <laughs> he did the music for Taxi Driver later that same year, but he died before Taxi Driver came out. Okay, back to the movie. But to sum things up, I want to sum, sum up at this point, about halfway through the movie. What is the theme of tonight's movie, class? Uh, uh, it's a baby. baby. Oh, yeah. What causes problems with a baby? Right. Feed the baby. <laughs> Feed the baby or we're all going to be unhappy. Isn't that the theme? Yeah. Most scholars would agree on that, I right. think. Oh, I see we have some comedians in the audience. <laughs> Well, we have an outlet for all that destructive energy, young man and young woman. Just enter our Monster Vision caption contest and try to make the six-headed jury laugh. 
and the winner gets our exclusive Monster Vision t-shirt, plus the scorn of all the sore losers. Just go to tnt.turner.com slash monstervision, and maybe you can prove just how hysterically funny your mom never realized you are. Play the Monster Caption Contest and win a free t-shirt at tnt.turner.com forward slash monstervision. He was a quiet guy, a bit of a loner, and a really big hockey fan. Let TNT give you the creeps with five of the best Friday the 13th movies, all in one night. Try and survive a Friday the 13th marathon, starting one week from tonight at 8 on TNT. Brought to you by Godzilla from Columbia TriStar Home Video. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs, and it's alive on TNT. So the killer mutant baby was going through the enrollment records of the Santa Monica Independent School District in an effort to find his brother. Is that what we're supposed to get from the baby roaming the halls of the school scene? That's the only part of the movie that I don't quite buy. But that was some great scary crawling back there, wasn't it, with the toddler eye level baby cam or whatever that was. <laughs> Rick Baker, probably the most famous makeup guy in the world, made the baby for the movie. And Rick's done everything from the great 1971 John Landis ape movie called Schlock uh, all the way to, well, he did Men in Black. So that's how much his career has exploded. But Rick had worked on a movie called Bone for Larry Cohen. And one day when he was working on The Exorcist, Larry called him up and said he had this story about a monster baby who terrorizes a city and he was thinking about having Big Rick uh, build a baby suit for his cat. <laughs> well, Rick balked at the cat idea, so Larry suggested maybe a chicken or maybe two chickens. So Rick starts coming up with more realistic ideas, and he tells Larry to just let him know as soon as the picture's set, and he'll have plenty of time to do it right. So next thing, Rick gets a call from Larry who says, hey, we started shooting the picture two weeks ago, and we're going to need the baby pretty soon. So Larry had decided that he wasn't going to show the baby in the film, except possibly a few very brief cuts, maybe a couple of frames, subliminal effect, and he tells Rick that he just wants him to build a dummy baby for the actors to react to. So Rick builds the baby really fast. He brings it over to Larry's house where they're shooting, and Larry goes crazy for it. He says, let's shoot a scene with it. Let's have it crawl across the table into Sharon Farrell's lap. He wants Rick to just tie a string to it and drag it across the table, which looks like crap. So Rick suggests building a mask and just doing some tight shots of an actor wearing the baby mask, like, you know, snarling and baring its fangs and stuff. And Larry says, OK, so Rick goes back to his shop. He builds this mask. He builds a pair of monster baby gloves and a partial mutant baby monster suit to fit his, on his girlfriend because Larry doesn't want to pay an actor to sit in a chair and snarl. <laughs> and then, of course, Larry flips out again, and he decides to expand that role, and we get all kinds of fun, scary crawling scenes. Okay, let's get back to the film. See, people always think movies are planned. Uh. You know, professors in film school, they lecture on how, well, the director skillfully used this crane shot to create this sensation of mankind growing more and more insignificant. And actually, some guy said, hey, I'll let you use this really cool crane for 200 bucks a day. And the director goes, hey, crane shot. Cool. <laughs> I'm Joe Bob Briggs, and people do write to me, and some of them try real hard to get on TV. Let me tell you something that won't work. Hey, Joe Bob, you remind me of a castrated pigeon. Please read this on TV and say my name and the name of my cousin and tell me when it'll be on. OK, here's something that will work. Dear Joe Bob, not since the novels of Leo Tolstoy has there been a genius able to speak to the whole world as you have since the arrival of Monster Vision. Now you see the difference? Castrated pigeon, Tolstoy. Don't forget this. Send those letters and cards to me in care of Monster Vision, 1010 Techwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318, or email me at monstervision at turner.com. Maybe Tolstoy's a little far. William Butler Yates, better example. Don't miss Monster Vision, hosted by Joe Bob Briggs, every Saturday night on TNT. Back to Monster Vision host Joe Bob Briggs, and it's alive on TNT. 
Can you believe Warner Brothers buried this movie in 1974? The studio loved the idea of a monster baby flick, but when it was done, they only made 55 prints of it. And they didn't even advertise that it was about a monster baby because their research told them that people wouldn't want to go see that kind of movie. So the ads were this kind of vague picture of a dead woman that said, whatever it is, it's alive. <laughs> and Larry Cohen was pretty PO'd that they didn't say what the gimmick was, so he pestered them and pestered them. Larry is that way. He went after them for four years, and then amazingly, this new regime at the studio decided to resurrect the film in 1977 with a new ad campaign, and this time it was a picture of a Rosemary's Baby carriage with a claw coming out of it, and they made 850 prints, and people lined up around the block, and it became a big hit four years late. Okay, big conclusion to It's Alive, coming right up. The ending to this movie just kills me. Larry Cohen says this flick would have been more successful if he'd filmed it in French and added English subtitles. And then the art film critics would have jumped all over it. But is it just me, or, or tell me this, is the music in this thing really, really cheesy? I know it's Bernard Herrmann and everything, and he's really famous, he did Psycho, but listen to this. This music to search the house by. Yeah. And now, Joe Bob's last call, and it lives again on TNT. Joe Bob Briggs again, and I'll be honest with you, I got a little choked up when John Ryan cries there at the end of the movie. That baby is seriously sympathetic, don't you think? Crying and rubbing its eyes like that. Man. Everybody thought Larry Cohen was wacko when he wrote this script, but it's been imitated like crazy. Demon Seed with Julie Christie, The Beast Within, and towards the end of the movie Species, the alien gives birth and Forrest Whitaker's in the sewer system hunting the alien baby with a rifle, just like the one that John Ryan has in It's Alive, and the dialogue is almost verbatim. Anyhow, we do have a sequel coming up, but first I want to remind you that next week, Halloween, by the way, is the first annual Joe Bob Briggs Dust to Dawn Friday the 13th yeah. Marathon. It starts at 8 o'clock, so don't tune in at 10.30 and expect me to start it over, you hear me? We're showing parts 1 through 6 of the classic th Friday the 13th series, and yours truly will be staying up all night to escort those of you nutsoid enough to stay up with me. And in keeping with the spirit of the holiday, I will be accomplishing this all-nighter without the aid of artificial stimulants of any kind. What? <laughs> That's not artificial. That comes from natural earth products. Yeah. Okay, let's watch part two now. It lives again. Another suburban woman is about to give birth to a mutant monster, and it's not a pretty sight. Here are those drive-in totals. We have nine dead bodies, one dead snake, multiple neck chomping, face eating, bo uh, bloody fingernail chewing, <laughs> one motor vehicle chase, kung fu, infant fu, Four stars, check it out, and we will be here. There are three It's Alive films, actually all made by the great Larry Cohen, who thinks horribly deformed angry babies are kind of funny. My kind of guy. I'm Joe Bob Briggs, and people do write to me, and some of them try real hard to get on TV. Let me tell you something that won't work. Hey, Joe Bob, you remind me of a castrated pigeon. Please read this on TV and say my name and the name of my cousin and tell me when it'll be on. Okay, here's something that will work. Dear Joe Bob, not since the novels of Leo Tolstoy has there been a genius able to speak to the whole world as you have since the arrival of Monster Vision. Now, you see the difference? Castrated pigeon, Tolstoy. Don't forget this. Send those letters and cards to me in care of Monster Vision, 1010 Techwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318, or email me at monstervision at turner.com. Maybe Tolstoy's a little far. <laughs> William Butler Yates, better example. Don't miss Monster Vision, hosted by Joe Bob Riggs, every Saturday night on TNT. Back to Joe Bob's last call, and it lives again on TNT. You know the great thing about all Larry Cohen movies? You can be surfing through cable and come across a Larry Cohen movie right in the middle and not know anything about it, and in 20 seconds you go, it's Larry! He has this style all his own. It's not like anybody else. He has that super sharp photography. 
Uh, always some quirky New York characters. He's from New York. Great scenes. He writes dialogue better than anybody in the business. And, um, okay, all right. Anybody who just watched the first movie already has a big clue as to what's going on here in this one. That's because the creepy guy, Frank Davis, who sits there on the couch at the baby shower and annoys everybody, he was the star of the first movie, the man who wounds his own monster baby and then tries to get forgiveness from it. So here he is, the same actor, John P. Ryan, and it's kind of a tip-off that he knows things. But now... Is he good or is he evil? That's what we'll find out as It Lives Again continues. Lots of people call their baby it. <laughs> Every woman's nightmare, right? There's something wrong with your baby. It's a mutating fetus. We'll need armed men in the delivery room. Larry Cohen is really, really sick, isn't he? People say to me, Joe Bob, where can I download? I don't want to hear about that. Ask your mother about that. But if you want to find out about the Monster Vision schedule or read some of the weirdest mail I've gotten since my ex-wife sent me a cherry bomb valentine or just ogle the Playmate of the Week, then write this down, tnt.turner.com slash monstervision. 24 hours a day, you can waste time there and download all you want. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash monstervision. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call, and it lives again on TNT. A rampaging mutant killer baby is on the loose, and so this seems like a good time to pause for Joe Bob's Jailbreak, our weekly visit with our most loyal and captive audience, the inmates of America's prisons. And to help us out, here she is, Miss Super Rica Taco 1998, the TNT mail girl, Rusty. You think you'll ever have a kid, Rusty? Someday, I hope to. Well, you know, it's widely believed that people from Texas have high sperm counts. We're virile. Hmm. Yes, those people in East Texas have high sperm counts. I'm from East Texas. The ones that marry their cousins over and over again. Are you implying, are you implying about East Texas that the old genealogy tree might be a little stunted here? Well, I'm implying that there are people who have babies like the one in this movie. And 18 years later, the baby has a high school diploma and a trailer house. But you're not from East Texas. No. So there's no danger of our being cousins, right? No. Plus, you get that cross-fertilization thing going. Where are you from? West Texas. Okay, there you go. What could be more different than East Texas and West Texas? Mm, South Texas. South Texas? You want to marry a Mexican? Hey, sure. Cross-fertilization. Well, in that case, why don't you just get on a bus and go find a husband in God knows Louisiana? Why don't we read this letter? That's dangerous, though, marrying out of state like that. This is from Daryl Parks of the Neal Unit of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice in Amarillo. Okay. Dear Mr. Briggs, polite man, you and he would get along. I'm currently incarcerated, and my question is this. Why do they always say incarcerated? Why don't they, why don't they ever say I'm, I'm in jail? I'm currently incarcerated, and my question is this. In the 1990s, why are there so many women afraid to have any type of relationship with a strong man that's incarcerated? And what fear do they have of having a distance relationship with the possibility of a future? And if you know any women that are interested in a man that is incarcerated and willing to take interest in a lo lonely inmate in search for a good man or good friendship, please give my address to them. I'm 5'11". 175-pound black male, 29 years old, never been married, native of Dallas, Texas, smart and lonely. Mr. Daryl Parks, number 714-958 in uh, the uh, Amarillo, Texas unit there. Well, Daryl, I don't know how to tell you this, but probably the main reason that women don't want to start up a relationship with you is that you're in prison. <laughs> That would be number one, you know. It's kind of hard to go to Neiman Marcus and pick out carpets while you're being cavity searched with a rubber glove. You know what I mean? But Rusty, what's your opinion? Would you ever be interested in a relationship with an incarcerated individual? Oh, probably not. Not too exciting, is it? Hmm. I do have a girlfriend who might do it, though. Got a little spare time on her hands or mm -hmm. something? What does she look like? Don't say she has a good personality. <laughs> She's petite and kind of quiet. Okay, deaf midget. All right. <laughs> No. She's a nice woman who might like a pen pal. But she's not very attractive. You know, this guy did not even mention looks. 
He, he asked if you knew any women who were looking for a good friendship. Looks aren't everything, Joe Bob. She's butt ugly, Daryl. <laughs> but maybe there's somebody else watching tonight who will write to you. Okay, let's do the stats. Texas Department of Criminal Justice Neal Unit opened in 1995. It's located in Amarillo, Texas. 462 male inmates, minimum and medium security. We haven't gotten any letters from maximum security lately. Don't those guys have cable? Probably not. Anyhow, the warden at the Neal Unit is named Wilhelmina. Maybe Wilhelmina's got some friends, you know? <laughs> Special programs there include rational behavior training. <laughs> Use that. I just, I don't know why that makes me laugh so much. Rational behavior training. You know, why can't I? <laughs> Great. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, anyway, I think Larry, Larry Cohen may have his next movie idea here. Educational programs there include GED, ESL, landscape design, construction, maintenance, painting, and decorating. And I don't even want to know who's enrolled in those last two, no, decorating, no, 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 you know, no, no, no. and painting. <laughs> Daryl, get your hiney out of there. Free your mind and your butt will follow. And uh, so maybe your friend is looking for a sperm donor, huh? She just might be. I think I'll pass on that. You know that guy in L.A. who, who killed his parents and got sentenced to life in prison, but all the girls thought he was cute? Who's that? Lyle Menendez. Lyle Menendez. Yeah. He married a Playboy Playmate in prison. And then he cheated on her with another Playboy Playmate. He put a letter in the wrong envelope and sent it to his wife instead of this other playmate that he was writing to, which just goes to show that even in prison, monogamy is impossible. I mean, if that guy can't do it with a Playboy playmate in prison, who can do it? Do you want me to answer that? No, not really. I'm still thinking about rational behavior training, because, you know, why, why, can't I, why can't I kill that guy? Well, that, that wouldn't be rational, would it? Oh, I see we have some comedians in the audience. Well, we have an outlet for all that destructive energy, young man and young woman. Just enter our Monster Vision caption contest and try to make the six-headed jury laugh. And the winner gets our exclusive Monster Vision t-shirt, plus the scorn of all the sore losers. Just go to tnt.turner.com slash monstervision, and maybe you can prove just how hysterically funny your mom never realized you are. Play the Monster Caption Contest and win a free t-shirt at tnt.turner.com forward slash monstervision. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call, and it lives again on TNT. The babies are restless, and that's Andrew Duggan as Dr. Perry, the scientist who says, you behave yourself or I won't let you out. Why do I think this method is not gonna work? Anyhow, he was in the first movie, too, and that's Frederick Forrest as the harried father, chain-smoking, which further agitates the babies, of course. Frederick Forrest is one of those actors who's always been right on the brink of being really famous. He's probably best known for Hammett in 1983, but he was nominated for an Oscar in 1979 for The Rose. And uh, I think he looks a little too goofy to be a leading man, but not goofy enough to be a character actor. He's an in-betweener, native of Waxahachie, Texas, which we all know and love as a very historic Texas town and the place you stop for moon pies on the way to Waco. Okay, back to the movie. People like it when I give out their hometowns, you know? I don't know why, really. They say, I used to not like that guy, but then I found out he's from here. <laughs> They're always proud that he grew up there. So why wouldn't they be ashamed that one day he left? <laughs> you know, he said, you know what? I'm getting out of this place. They forget that part. Back to Joe Bob's last call, and it lives again on TNT. You know, I forgot to mention, the guy who plays Dr. Forrest that's an actor named Eddie Constantine making a rare appearance in an English language film. Eddie Constantine was born in L.A., but he went to Paris and became a famous singer under the tutelage of Edith Piaf. <laughs> and then he starred in a whole slew of French films as a tough guy, alcoholic American detective named L'Ami Cachion. <laughs> now, these L'Ami Cachion movies to an American are unwatchable. 
It's one of those things we don't understand. Only the French understand it. But he was a superstar over there, and he made movies in France and Germany for years and years. He was in the famous Godard film, Alpha Ville. <laughs> he worked for Rainer Werner Fassbinder in Beware of a Holy Whore. He was an artiste. And then he died about uh, five, six years ago in Wiesbaden at the age of 76. Why am I talking about this guy? <laughs> Madame et Monsieur, les séances commencent. We used to say that back in my hometown. It means slop a little mustard on that weenie. <laughs> I'm Joe Bob Briggs, and people do write to me, and some of them try real hard to get on TV. Let me tell you something that won't work. Hey, Joe Bob, you remind me of a castrated pigeon. Please read this on TV and say my name and the name of my cousin and tell me when it'll be on. Okay, here's something that will work. Dear Joe Bob, not since the novels of Leo Tolstoy has there been a genius able to speak to the whole world as you have since the arrival of Monster Vision. Now, you see the difference? Castrated Pigeon, Tolstoy. Don't forget this. Send those letters and cards to me in care of Monster Vision, 1010 Techwood Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, 30318, or email me at monstervision at turner.com. Maybe Tolstoy's a little far. <laughs> William Butler Yates, better example. Don't miss Monster Vision, hosted by Joe Bob Riggs, every Saturday night on TNT. He was a quiet guy. A bit of a loner. And a really big hockey fan. Let TNT give you the creeps with five of the best Friday the 13th movies all in one night. Try and survive a Friday the 13th marathon starting one week from tonight at 8 on TNT. Brought to you by Godzilla from Columbia TriStar Home Video. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call, and it lives again on TNT. Well, we're a full hour into the movie before we get a tiny glimpse of the mutant baby. Those baby monsters were created by legendary special effects makeup guy Rick Baker, which we covered tonight for those of you who showed up on time for the first movie. But I think the babies are actually scarier when they're off camera, when we just hear those disgusting chomping noises and snorting and... We see the faces on the grown-ups. And uh, the head bad guy, by the way, the one who knows that the only thing to do is pump thousands of rounds into the little toddlers, he's played by the late John Marley, a character actor. He's probably best known as the movie executive in The Godfather, and he also was nominated for the Academy Award as Ollie McGraw's father in Love Story. You ever listen to a baby when they're making those eating noises, though? Cute little gurgles and burps and grunts, and then they spit up right directly in your face. <laughs> See, this might be a horror movie, but there's some psychological reality behind it, you know? People say to me, Joe Bob, where can I download? I don't want to hear about that. Ask your mother about that. But if you want to find out about the Monster Vision schedule or read some of the weirdest mail I've gotten since my ex-wife sent me a cherry bomb valentine or just ogle the Playmate of the Week, then write this down, tnt.turner.com slash monstervision. 24 hours a day, you can waste time there and download all you want. Visit the Monster Vision website at tnt.turner.com forward slash monstervision. You know, a lot of people write me and say, hey, Joe Bob Briggs, just what is Monster Vision? You don't need no special glasses or an insect's head. Just a healthy love for slime and disrespect for the dead. We'll talk about some movies by the old double wide. And when you get that creepy feeling creeping up inside, well, then you got monster vision. It's a heck of a fright. We're tearing the heart out of Saturday night. These monster vision movies serve a primitive drive. Cause watching people die can make you feel so alive So throw away your clicker now, the flicks have begun Cause there's nothing you can do while fully dressed It's as fun as watching TNT beneath the bugs after light We're tearing the heart out of Saturday night Tearing the heart out of Saturday night Back to Joe Bob's last call, and it lives again on TNT. 
And so the tables are turned and the parents are under siege, waiting for the mutant fruit of their loins to hunt them down and start chomping. Kathleen Lloyd plays the mom, and when this came out, she had just made her film debut in The Missouri Breaks. But she's best known as Carol Baldwin on the hit series Magnum P.I., and that's about all I'm going to say because we do have one yard monster still out there and it just ate the face off of the daddy from the first movie. So it's time for the conclusion of It Lives Again. And after this, TNT's got another one from the great Larry Cohen, Return to Salem's Lot. I really wish we were showing It's Alive 3, also known as Island of the Alive, which in some ways is even better than this one. In fact, in most ways it's better than this one. Of course, I realize that's like comparing Texas champagnes, right? But there are some gradations of quality here, you know? I'll shut up. Back to Joe Bob's Last Call, and it lives again on TNT. And so Frederick Forrest stands on the streets of San Francisco trying to educate the next generation of mutant baby parents. And Larry Cohen had it all set up for another sequel, which he did eventually make, but we'll save that for another time. Okay, I want to remind you that next week is the first annual Joe Bob Briggs Dusk to Dawn Friday the 13th Marathon, which ends at approximately 6 in the morning. So all you people who are awake right now, I'll expect you to be here with me then for the duration. And uh, it starts at 8 o'clock, and it's over at 6 o'clock. And that is Halloween night. But, I, I, but we don't want to call it the Halloween marathon. I was afraid to mention that in the name of the show because it's a Friday the 13th marathon, not a Halloween marathon. I mean, it's on Halloween, so it is a Halloween marathon. But let me try this. Jason, yes. Michael Myers, no. All right? 8 p.m., be there. That's it for me, Joe Bob Briggs, reminding you that there is an exception to every rule, except this one. <laughs> hey, you guys know what Lucille Ball and Monica Lewinsky have in common? They both had sex with a Cuban. Ooh. Joe Bob Briggs reminding you that the drive-in will never die. Hey, did you guys hear Clinton got a new computer? It has six inches of hard drive and no memory. <laughs> what does Clinton say to interns as they leave his office? Don't hit your head on the desk. Did you hear about the Bill Clinton sale at clothing stores on President's Day? All pants half off. What does Bill say to Hillary after sex? I'll be home in 20 minutes. 